On September 8th of 2021, I enrolled myself into the One Room Challenge, a biannual event in which participants are to transform a room in eight weeks. Over the next two months, I learned so much, picked up new tools, connected with other bloggers, and tackled the space in our home that I had been wanting to update the most, our kitchen. Here's how it all went. So this is our kitchen from before. It's a pretty standard sized one for a condo in San Francisco. We've got these outdated granite tops that curve on the edge and the previous owner did make some updates to like the appliances and the hardware, but I wanted to modernize it and brighten it up even more. The biggest change I wanted to make was to shave down that raised bar top for a more open concept flat peninsula to really open up the space and my other goals were to replace the countertops with a white one paint the cabinets a light gray so that it's still bright but has some color and character add in a clean modern backsplash replace the hardware with some brass ones to bring in warmth and tie the kitchen with the rest of our living room i really wanted to get a new undermount sink that looks flush and a new faucet and lastly we wanted to bring more visual interest to that blank peninsula wall by adding in some wall paneling so here are some inspo pics as you can see i really want it to feel very airy and modern. This kitchen has been an area in our home that I didn't love showing because I felt like it wasn't really my style. So I was so ready for a change. So right off the bat, we had a major delay that set us back three weeks, which is nearly half of the challenge. So what happened was that we wanted to get the shaving down that raised bar top approved by our HOA first. Ultimately, they voted that we would need a permit for the work. And hiring somebody to shave down that bar top for us would have cost us at least an extra two grand. So we decided to just keep it as is. This was a hard decision to make, but I realized that the goal was to modernize and brighten up the space. And I felt like this was still achievable with the raised bar top. luck turned around when amidst that big supply shortage that we had this year, I literally found one paint sample in the color that I had been eyeing in all of my nearby local hardware stores. I applied a patch onto our cabinet doors as soon as I got home and I immediately knew that it was the one. It's the perfect light gray to still keep it bright but still adds enough color for some character. It is the next evening and I'm carefully removing all of the cabinet doors and drawers to prep for painting. A quick tip here is to add a tape label to the door and another one inside of the cabinet with the same letters to easily match them back up later. And I recommend covering all potholes when doing this. I made a rookie mistake and dropped a nail on accident, which I have never been able to get out since then. Seeing all of these cabinet doors undone was such an eyesore and a nightmare for me because of all the stuff that we have in there. And that same night, I cleaned and degreased all the doors while watching a Cinderella story. Let me know below if this is your classic as well. I primed all of the doors using my favorite shellac based primer. I used this stuff when repainting the IKEA cabinets for my fiance's mom's office and I swear by this stuff it works so well on those laminated surfaces without requiring sanding. I took out all of the chicken stock, soy milk boxes, and canned food that we have at home to prop the cabinet doors up for painting and drying. That night, as I was degreasing the frame of the cabinets, I realized I had forgotten to fill in the holes on the doors for knobs before priming, so I had to go in and do that. Um, since we're transitioning from handles to knobs, I basically just went in and filled in the top holes with wood filler. Once that dried, I sanded down the wood filler so that it looked really flush, and then I gave all of the cabinet doors a second layer of primer. I finally began painting the cabinets and this is basically the same exact process twice all over again. Two layers of paint on each side of the doors and I think all of the priming and painting part must have spanned several days, maybe almost a week because of the time it took for each layer to dry. So yesterday they came 
to remove our previous granite tops and it is already looking so much brighter guys like just imagine if we had butcher block style countertops here they also removed the like five to six inch tall backsplash that was there i can't wait to start cleaning up after we've got the new countertops so like this is the other half of our living space it is just a mess Guys, we finally have white countertops! The sink faucet is not um, in yet, which is why it's angled really weirdly. But oh my god, guys. It already looks so much more modern and bright. And oh, I was playing around with the cabinet doors. I added the hardware to two of them, and then that's the backsplash peel and stick by Tic Tac Tiles that I'll be adding and yeah After we got our new countertops, I finished up painting the cabinet frames and then I reinstalled all of the doors and drawers. I am loving our new knobs and handles. So these are both from Amazon. They're from the same seller. These are solid brass, which I love. They're very heavy. I really wanted spherical ones and it was hard finding some at like a affordable price i was so happy to find these and then after i received these that's when i decided to buy these from the same seller because i was really happy with the knobs i'm so excited to partner with tic tac tiles for this project they are a peel and stick tile company that offers them in many different patterns colors and textures I decided to go with their thicker white subway tiles with the white grout because I really like that clean look and these basically come in these 12 inch by 12 inch squares. So our walls are textured and we also had these deep patches from when the previous backsplash was removed that we wanted to fill in before sticking on the tiles. So what we did first was sand down the wall um, and then we went in with joint compound to patch up all those spots. Let me tell you though, some of these patches were so deep it took forever for the joint compound to dry so we did have to pause this part for a few days. But after they were finally dry, we applied the tiles. So when doing this, you want to start from one end and work your way from there all the way to the other end so that it looks seamless. To apply, you peel the back of the tile off and that reveals the sticky part and then you just press that against the wall. And after making sure that it's flat and stuck on there, you can then remove the top film. I highly recommend construction scissors when working with these because it's going to make cutting the tiles so much easier. For the power outlet holes, I just used a utility knife to cut a block off. Overall, I'm so pleased with these peel and stick tiles. I think they're a great budget alternative to real ones and they adhere very well. I'm loving the clean look of these white subway tiles. It definitely adds a more modern look to the kitchen. Let me know if you're curious about how well these last. I'm happy to provide an update for you guys. The next day, I went in with some sealant and sealed all the edges and corners so that the tiles look really clean and flush against the countertop. I love the look of beaded boards and wanted to use them on the blank peninsula wall for visual interest. This is my first time working with beaded boards and I loved how convenient it was because the paneling is basically all done for you and you just have to buy the boards themselves. So we got these at Lowe's and had them cut there. We first measured the wall and sanded it down and as I was sanding, Jason went ahead and scored the beaded boards with a utility knife and then folded them to break them. Here we're marking all the studs so we know where we can nail gun the beaded boards in. Then to install, we applied construction glue on each panel and then pushed it against the wall. And as my brother and I held it up, Jason went in and nail gunned it to secure it. The next day, I went in and sealed all of the edges where the panels meet. And then I went in and primed and painted with the same color as the kitchen cabinets to tie everything together. 
While I had the paint out, I also went back into the kitchen and painted the floor trim beneath the bottom cabinets. The white trim that was there was standing out to me and I really wanted everything to look more flush and streamlined. If you've seen my makeovers, you know this is my favorite part. <laughs> so we bought this little wall area where the peninsula is and I thought shelves would look really nice there. I searched everywhere for thick and wide enough rustic shelves that would fit and I found these ones off Amazon that are perfect. I added these vintage bowls and plates that I thrifted a while back and have been holding on to for the right display moment. And here are these little espresso cups that I found at an antique shop with my mom. I styled the top shelf with a frame, this vase that I bought at a boutique in Medellin, Colombia years ago, and this little pothos plant. Right beneath the shelves, I added this fruit bowl. Then I replaced our paper towel holder with this brass one from Amazon to tie in all of the hardware. I also organized the right cabinet by our microwave that we use the most often with this little turntable and this has been life changing. I've had this Lou Creuset utensil crock that I replaced with this new marbled one that my friend gifted me from Crate and Barrel and I love how it elevates this area and matches that clean look. I still love my Lou Creuset one and plan on swapping between the two throughout the seasons. To the right of that, I added these two cheese boards. One is a new one that I got off World Market and I love that walnut tone and how it matches the other wood tones in this space. And it adds a really nice contrast against the white backsplash. I layered it with this little ceramic canister that I thrifted. I love showcasing all of my thrifted vintage finds. Then I got a new dish drying rack in white to have it camouflage more into the countertop. Um, I love the wooden detailing on this. This is from Amazon and it's a nice dupe to this crate and barrel one. By our sink, I've got this amber glass soap dispenser set from Amazon and this came with the sticker labels and I love how modern it looks. This tray from Target holds them together. However, for this reno, I wanted to showcase a new soap that I received as a gift from my friend, the Aesop Aromatique hand soap if I pronounce that correctly. Um, what's funny is that I got my amber glass soap as like a dupe to the whole Aesop brand and now I get to have this fancy soap in my kitchen. This stuff smells and feels amazing. It feels so luxurious and I'm just so grateful for the gifts that I got to use in this space. For the back corner, I added this thrifted tray this coffee canister by Hearth and Hand, and this glass vase that I also thrifted, and I'm filling it with some fresh florals from Trader Joe's, of course. Right by my always pan, I added this marble spoon rest that I found at Ross, and I topped off this whole section with this cute checkered kitchen towel. I'll make sure to link everything that I'm showing in the description box below. And to finish it off, I got a new rug for this kitchen. It's part of the Chris Loves Julia and Laloy rug collection. I love how it's hand tufted and thick, which makes it plushy and really comfortable to stand on, but it's still kitchen friendly because it's not shaggy or anything like that, which makes it easy to clean. I love the warm tones on it and how it ties in with the wood we've got going on. All right, it is time for the big reveal. Let's reminisce back to what the kitchen looked like before. It was a little bit outdated. I felt like there wasn't really a style. And after weeks of labor and love, this is what our kitchen looks like now.
and that is it for the reno did we complete it on time for the one room challenge no we did not <laughs> however by the eighth week we just had some finishing touches and decorating left to do so i think we did a pretty good job i'm so grateful that i did the challenge anyways because it was such a great motivator to finally update the space in our home that i had been wanting to for such a long time and i'm so happy with our kitchen i'll definitely be sharing more content in there let me know below which part of the reno was your favorite and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you'd like to see more home decor content from me follow me on instagram if you'd like i love connecting with you guys over there and as always thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one